Welcome to the Grid Iron Roundup with your host, Randy Silver. We have your college football week eight review, storylines, scores, game review, Heisman watch, standings, and more. As always, let's start with the biggest news of the day. What will that be? Drum roll, please. Let's get into the college football AP top 25 week nine rankings analysis and reaction. Here we go. Georgia, Michigan, Ohio State, Florida State, Washington are your top five in the AP top 25 pool. Georgia, Michigan, Ohio State, Florida State, Washington are your top five in the coaches pool. Rounding out the five, this is the first time that all five have been the same. Georgia in the AP poll, 38 first place votes, Michigan 19, Ohio State, Florida State, Washington barely beat Arizona State. They lost their first place votes from last week, but they stay in the same spot. And you can see Georgia's overwhelming in the coaches poll number one in the first place votes rounding out the top 10 in ap poll you have oklahoma texas oregon alabama penn state penn state moved down after losing to ohio state and the other poll for the coaches poll you have oklahoma texas alabama oregon penn state so everyone moved up because Penn State went down. Alabama was an upset alert in the first half against Tennessee. They pulled out a crazy good second half, held Tennessee scoreless, and they won. And that pushed them up. Who else moved up? The biggest losers on the day. North Carolina moved down seven after the shocking loss to Virginia. They now have one loss on the record as a result moving down seven. Oregon State moves up to 11. Ole Miss 12. Utah 13. Notre Dame 14. LSU moves up to 15th four spots big mover missouri moves up four spots big mover louisville moves up three spots to 18th air force is 19th look at them undefeated duke moves down after their loss to florida state tennessee moves down after their loss to alabama tulane moves up ucla moves up too and who is the big brother in la is it usc no right now it's ucla they're ahead of usc usc after losing to Utah, moved down six spots to 24th. And the only team to move into the rankings this week that was unranked last week for the AP poll, James Madison, who are 7-0. Look at that. Good week for Virginia schools. James Madison in, UV, their second win on the season. They beat North Carolina. Who else received votes? Florida, Liberty, Kansas State, Miami, Fresno State, Oklahoma State, Toledo, Rutgers, Kentucky, UNLV, Wisconsin. Iowa dropped out. I'm going to show you under that game because it was wild. When we look at the coaches poll, it's going to be very similar. So you have Ole Miss, Oregon State, Utah, Notre Dame, LSU, 11 through 15. And the rest of the top 25, Missouri, North Carolina, Louisville, Air Force, Tennessee, Duke, USC, Tulane, UCLA, James Madison. So very similar in the top 25 polls across the board. You have to say the biggest losers on the week, North Carolina losing to an unranked Virginia. USC losing at home to Utah after they took the lead and they gave up the last second field goal to lose it. The biggest winner has to be Alabama coming back and beating Tennessee. Ohio State beating Penn State. Michigan destroyed Michigan State as expected. Stay up there. So now we can see the top six teams are undefeated in the AP poll and the coaches poll. The top six teams are undefeated. Who else is undefeated in the poll? Air Force. Let's go. Congrats to them. James Madison, let's go. Congrats to them. Same thing over here in the coaches poll. We're getting into the end of October, November, meaning we're in the back half of the season. Most teams have between three to four games left in conference championships. So let's keep it going. It's fun. That also means that the Heisman Watch is coming up. So let's dive into it. Heisman Watch leading into week nine. So let's see who was the biggest winner. J.J. McCarthy of Michigan was the biggest winner of the weekend. He is now the odds-on favorite to win at plus 180. Second is Michael Penix Jr., plus 300. Jaden Daniels from LSU. Jordan Travis, Florida State. Dylan Gabriel, Oklahoma. Bo Nix, Oregon. Who is not there is current reigning Heisman Trophy winner. Caleb Williams, second loss in the past two weeks. Out of the contention. Out of the contention national championship. Pac-12 contention is still there, but Heisman contention is gone. Why is J.J. McCarthy number one? He's thrown for 1,800 yards with 18 touchdowns, three interceptions, 94 QBR, leads the nation. He's a great leader, terrific player. Michigan's second in the nation, undefeated. 
Michael Penix Jr. is still right there. I mean, tough loss to Arizona State. You know, they just had a really big win against Oregon. They did not get let down and get a loss. There's more opportunities here when he plays in bigger games throughout the season as they get the crunch time to get back up number one. Uh, in that game, he had no touchdowns but two interceptions. Not his best game. Uh, he can bounce back from that. Jaden Daniels has the best stats, not getting enough love. Um, LSU has two losses, so it's hard to win Heisman when your team has two losses. He's thrown for 2,500 yards, 25 touchdowns, three interceptions. His QBR is right behind McCarthy at 9.7. So those are your Heisman watch right here. Let's comment your thoughts. Who do you think is winning, losing? Anybody is sleeper not there yet? Uh, but probably not. Top five is where it's going to stay. Let's dive into some news. Officials wiped out Iowa's punt return touchdown home loss with 130 left in the game. So here's the punt. Iowa's down two. Whoop! <laughs> bye bye. What a spin move. Just nasty. Took five plays out of the play. Stiff arm. Crosses the field. Can he get in the end zone? He's got a caravan. Yes, he can. Iowa takes the 16 to 12 lead. They make an extra point. 17 12. That means Minnesota would need a t touchdown to win the game. But look right here. He's running. He's running. He's pointing. They're calling that right there with the left arm when he's going like this a fair catch. Very tough call, but let's just watch that. Whoop! Bye bye. <laughs> that was wild. That was one of the best punt returns in quite a while. Look at his face. He's shocked. Cannot believe it. The referee said the receiver made a point gesture with his right hand and makes multiple wave gestures. That's why we called it. I already coached, so the ruling was tough. Note the fair catch procedures are reviewed with officials before every game. It was interesting the final analysis of the play. The most peculiar part to me was at least initial replay was the find he's in or out of bounds, which clearly he didn't. Somehow we went from there to the whole different series of topics. It's really hard to accept the explanation we got. Tough loss for Iowa. Jim Harbaugh, Michigan's laser-focused mid-sign probing uh, scandal. So obviously they dealt with uh, Coach Harbaugh getting suspended early in the season due to uh, recruiting issues. Now the NSA is investigating a Michigan staffer who was going to games and uh, trying to steal signs from other teams. Harborough says he has no n knowledge of this, did not say anything like this to happen, um, but he's keeping his team laid as their focus, eye on the prize. Michigan allegedly scouting future opponents in person at games, which would have been a violation of the NCAA rules. Michigan has since suspended staffer Connor Stallions, who is the focus of the investigation. And they, of course, beat Michigan State bad. Michigan State apologized for a Hitler image on video board. So they say a third party is the one who puts the graphics and creates the content for the video board. They were doing a name where this person is from. They use a picture of Hitler and say he's from Austria. Obviously, with what's happening in the East right now, not relevant to put, not smart at all. In general, take out what's happening right now, not smart at all to put someone who's a dictator and had millions of people killed and helped start a world war. Uh, Terrible call, uh, not so smart whatsoever. I hope people get fired over this. Michigan State had the scandal with their coach. They had the scandal with Larry Nancer a couple years ago. So they are always in the news for the wrong reasons. This is terrible. You need to hold yourself as a institution to higher standards and they're clearly not time and time again. Even if the third party's doing it, it's your video board, it's your home game. Uh, it's not okay whatsoever. And I hope there's re major repercussions. Their statement, we're deeply sorry for the content that was displayed. It's not rep representative of our institutional values. Is that true? Because we haven't really seen that uh, being right lately. Uh, MSG will not be using the third party source going forward and will implement stronger screening and approval procedures for all video content in the future. No other quizzes were displayed on the video board during the game, which the Wolverines, their in state rival, Michigan, won 49 0. Last news, Nick Saban says he's having fun coaching up and down Alabama. It's not the typical dominant team that we've seen, but hey, uh, Tennessee went up big in the halftime. Alabama came out in the second half and uh, destroyed Tennessee. What does Saban say? I love it. It's been great. The challenges are great. I enjoy coaching this team. That's not to say they're not taking years off my life. I mean, he's already in the 70s, so uh, he's up there and he's still out there coaching all the energy to be out there. Um, it's amazing to see. I'm okay with it. It's fun. They got a good spirit about them. Probably keeping them a bit younger. Let's look at the weekly leaders from week eight. Cameron Ward from Washington State University. They lost to Oregon by 14. 438 yards. Only QB to throw 400 yards 
in the a game this week. Congrats to him. One touchdown, zero interceptions, 154 rating. Other couple QBs below them have higher ratings, but 400 yards passing is impressive. When we look at rushing leaders, Ollie Gordon, running back from Oklahoma State, 282 yards rushing, 29 carries. Almost average a first down a carry, which is wild. Four touchdowns, amazing game. No one else even broke 190 yards rushing, let alone 200. Congrats to him. Receiving leaders, you recognize the name, Marvin Harrison Jr., OSU, Ohio State University, 166 yards receiving, 14 yards per reception, one touchdown, right above Lincoln Victor from Washington State University, who had 161. So Washington State University, a lot of good offense there this week. Marvin Harrison Jr., rated number one wide receiver in the draft, should be a top five, no less top ten. We look at your college football stat leaders overall. Michael Penix Jr. is still leading week over week for most pass yards. He's above Jaden Daniels by three yards only now. Three yards. Crazy. That's going to be fun all the way to the very end. When we look at rushing, Kamani Vidal, Troy, 951. Todd Brooks, TTU, at 891. Receiving, Mayik Nebers, LSU, 981. Luke and Brown, Miz, at 898. So a couple people right there, close to 1,000 yards receiving and rushing. And we look at the defensive leaders. Defensive leaders, interceptions, Maxwell Hairston from Kentucky with five, tied with Jemiah Cooper and Bylon Green with five each. Sacks, Jalen Green, 13 on the season. JMU is killing it. Defensive leaders, Jason Henderson, 109 total tackles already. Him and Jay Higgins both have over 100. Higgins with 101. Uh, fantastic work by them. UTEP right there, Trice Knight at uh, 90. College football top 25 scoreboard. Michigan blows out Michigan State 4-9-0. We know who's the big brother in that state right now. Ohio State beat Penn State 20-12. to We're going to key on this game in a second. This was a fun game to watch. Defensive affair. Florida State beat Duke 38-20. to You can see Duke didn't score in the second half after it being 20-17 to at halftime. Duke's QB re-injured his ankle and Duke's uh, backup QB wasn't really able to do much. Uh, Duke had a couple chances around the goal line, could not put it in. Have to credit Florida State there, undefeated still. Washington State, excuse me, Washington State. Washington beats Arizona State 15-7. Come back and win in the fourth quarter. Down 73, going the fourth. 12 unanswered points. We're going to show you some about that game. UCF almost upset Oklahoma. First real season in the Big 12. Right here, uh, still have... Zero losses, but they're getting better. They put the, took the number 16 all the way to the final. UCF missed a two-point conversion with a minute and a half to go. That would have won them the game. Texas-Houston. Texas with the win in state. Oregon beats Washington State. Washington State, after being ranked early in the season, uh, season's kind of fallen off a bit in Pac-12 play. Biggest shock of the day, of the week, of the weekend, maybe of the year. One and four, excuse me, one and five Virginia beats six and zero North Carolina. Now Virginia's two and five. Carolina's six and one. And look at that. Virginia with that touchdown in the fourth quarter that helped them get the victory. They were down 14 to 17 at halftime. Excuse me, they were down 17 14 at halftime and came out at halftime and took the W. Alabama beat Tennessee. We talked about Tennessee was up 20 to 7 at halftime and then 27 innings of points by Alabama. They take them to 5-0 in SEC play, 7-1 on the season. Ole Miss beat Auburn. Utah beat USC on the last second field goal. This game was fun to watch. Caleb Williams threw an interception. Uh, that gave Utah a 14-point lead, 17-point lead, and then USC got a score. They got a pick six themselves right back in the game. USC took the lead in the fourth quarter with a couple minutes to go. Utah drove and got the win on the game-winning field goal. LSU destroyed Army. Missouri, South Carolina, Air Force, still undefeated, 7-0. Tulane beats North Texas. Iowa, Minnesota, we just showed this game, Minnesota with the big win, and UCLA destroys Stanford. Here's the overall schedule, so let's just scroll through quickly so you can see all the games that maybe weren't just the big 25, top 25 teams.
probably the biggest game right here. Clemson, Miami. Miami beats Clemson double overtime. Clemson, after being at the top of the pinnacle of the sport for half a decade, now trying to work their way back up. Here are your football standings. So AAC, American Athletic Conference. Tulane is 3-0. SMU 3-0. UTSA is 3-0. Overall in the season, you can see right there, but they're at the top. ACC, Florida State's 5-0. Louisville 3-1. North Carolina 3-1. Duke is 2-1, and, and you see the overall record, so it's going to be a tough race to see who will play for the state in the conference final. Big 12, Oklahoma's 4-0, a bunch of teams right there, 3-1. Uh, this will be fun as we go through the month of November to see who beats each other up to get to the Big 12 conference final game. Big 10 conference, Michigan's 5-0, Ohio State's 4-0, Penn State 3-1. Michigan has to play Ohio State. We know that always happens around Thanksgiving time. Michigan has to play Penn State. So these teams are going to come out. Only one will come out of the East, which is wild. West is looking a bit easier. It looks like it's going to be Wisconsin. Uh, honestly, if one of them could get to the West. But we'll also see when the Big Ten expands next year with the addition of UCLA, USC, uh, Oregon, and Washington, whether they fall in here. And we'll see how uh, things may change conference-wise. Conference USA, Liberty's winning at 5-0. Independence, here we go. Mid-American Conference East, Miami, Ohio is 3-1. Tied with Ohio Bobcats, this will shake itself out. Same with the West, Toledo is 4-0. Uh, leading Northern Illinois right now is 3-1. Mountain West, Air Force 4-0. UNLV 3-0. Wyoming 2-1. So nice to see these two teams, especially Air Force at the top, not always that way. And Air Force, of course, is undefeated at 7-0. Pac-12, Washington is leading from the front, 4-0. USC took their first loss in conference by losing to Utah. Utah's at 3-1. Look at all those teams with one losses. This really could go anyway. So this will be fun to see how they beat each other up. SEC East, Georgia's 4-0. Looks like it's going to be them unless something catastrophic happens. And then the SEC West, Alabama's a 5-0. This looks like it could be them. They still need to play LSU. They really um, beat Ole Miss. So we'll see how this turns out. But Alabama is in the driver's seat. In the Sub Belt Conference, James Madison, as we said, has entered the rankings. They're 4 0. Great for them. They are leading the East, while the West is Texas State Bobcats. Let's dive into some key games. As we said earlier, Ohio State beat Penn State 20 12, defensive battle. This was a fun game to watch. I was at Buffalo Wild Wings watching this plus the UFC, so it was a good one-two to have going on. Here are the stats, and you can see most of the game it was Ohio State to win by probability. Yeah. Penn State really never had the lead. As you, uh, It makes sense. You can see field goal, field goal, 3-3, three, three, touchdown. So now you're up 10-6, to six, and Ohio State just took the game away. Big win for Ohio State. It was a packed house in uh, early start in Ohio. 105,000 fans to watch that game, which is crazy. Attendance capacity is 102, so a lot of standing room only. Duke lost to Florida State. Again, their QB Leonard uh, hurt his ankle, which was unfortunate. Duke looked really good to start, went up 10-0, uh, then became 10-7, 17-7, uh, and then Florida State was able to really come back, especially when Duke's QB was hurt. Uh, that was kind of the end of the game for them. Washington, Arizona State wins this game. Let's show you how they won this game. Let's blow this up. Let's get it work. And no, we'll go right here. So Arizona State's driving. Cornerback jumps the pass. He's got the convoy. Can he make it? One to beat. And he does. 7-6, Arizona State's leading at this point. Eight minutes left in the fourth quarter. This makes it after the extra point. 13-7, and that's about game. Big play right there. That's what takes you to title contention. That's what takes you over the top as a team. Big players make big plays. Amazing teams, great teams make plays when they need to. They made a play. Offense wasn't their normal self. Phoenix Jr., no touchdowns, two interceptions. But their team found a way to get a W. You win and survive. When you still have that zero in the lost column, that's what matters. UCF almost up to Oklahoma, as we said right here. This is a fourth and 10 play. If they don't get this, it's over. They only have one timeout. Great play design, cross across the field, perfect throw, great catch. 
six points right there. Can UCF get the two-point conversion? They get a bit tricky. They're looking to do a double pass right here, and Oklahoma snuffed it out, is able to stop it, and that's the game. UCF almost got the onside kick, could not. Oklahoma goes with the win and still it's undefeated in their column. Virginia with the biggest upset of the week, beat North Carolina. And it was this play right here that really ended it all. North Carolina QBs hit, balls fluttered. Virginia is able to intercept it. 30 seconds left in the fourth quarter. North Carolina needed a touchdown to get the win. The field goal was not enough. Virginia knows this game is over. They win. And of course, this game was actually in Chapel Hill uh, in North Carolina. So Virginia, go Virginia goes in and gets a win in front of 50,000 fans. Impressive. We talked about Alabama destroying. Just want to show this. T Tennessee went up 13-0, uh, 13-7, 27. And then Alabama just came out in the third quarter and put it to Tennessee. Cigars in the mouth after Tennessee had that win on the last second. Last year in Tennessee, Alabama came out um, and got the win in the second half. It was good. No coach really has beat Saban three times in a row in the SEC. I think it was maybe once or twice. So this would have been historic. And Alabama came out, win, still have one loss, keeps them in national title contention. And finally, USC loses to Utah. Utah QB Bur uh, Barnes made some big plays. Here we go. Second 15, 13 seconds. Look at that. He gets a first down, is able to escape, got 30 yards. USC's defense has been a liability all season. When they almost lost Arizona, that's why they got destroyed by Notre Dame. It was going to happen against a good offensive team. Utah, three seconds left, kicks the field goal to win the game. Goodbye, national Heisman contention for Caleb Williams. Goodbye, national title contention for USC. We'll see how they do in the Pac-12. Lincoln Riley, great offensive mind. You got to get the defense right. Same type of issues, Oklahoma. You can't just win offense to win. You need your defense to win championship. That's your college football week eight review. Storylines, scores, game review, Heisman standings. Tell me your thoughts. How did your favorite team do? How did your conference do? What are you looking forward to in week nine? Of course, come back here every Thursday. We have your full preview of the weekend. And every weekend on Sundays, we do your full recap, AP results, and so much more. Thank you for watching. Until next week, Randy out.